It is now day 48 of daily uploads from Too Long Didn't Scroll. For 48 days, TLDS has been delivering daily, quick, and listable news updates on noteworthy news events from the previous day, allowing you to stay on top of your world knowledge without endless scrolling. Find the show on YouTube and most podcast apps to find out what happened on any particular day in recent history. Day 48 lands on March the 8th of 2023, where we center back in on the Syrian civil war, which has raged on since 2011 after forces aligned under the Syrian interim government began an insurgency against the incumbent Syrian Arab Republic. The Syrian civil war has served as a proxy war between powers such as Iran and Russia in support of the Arab Republic and Turkey with the interim government. Terrorist organizations such as Al-Qaeda and ISIS have also often been involved in the war, while the Western world supports the autonomous administration of North and East Syria, also known as Rojava. Iran has continually provided support for its ally, the Syrian Arab Republic, since the onset of the war, having sent numerous pieces of infrastructure to the country and has sent and received numerous military and aid convoys. However, Iranian presence continues to draw the ire of many of its rivals, with the attack today being one of a drone strike on an Iranian weapons factory in the Deir Azur governorate. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights has reported that around 7 people have been killed and 15 others injured, among the dead include several Syrian civilians and Afghan fighters. While the perpetrator behind this attack has yet to have been identified, Israeli attacks on Iranian infrastructure in Syria have become increasingly common due to the perception of Iranian presence as a threat to their own security. Speaking of Iran, crackdowns on what the government perceives as foreign spies and traitors continue, with a sentencing hearing occurring today for Irishman Bernard Filan. Filan was arrested back in October of 2022 during the protests across the country in support of Masa Amini, who was killed by Iranian police. Filan, a travel consultant hoping to promote Iran as a tourist destination, was hauled off the streets with a bag over his head after he was observed taking photos of police officers and the burning mosque, and was accused of, quote-unquote, providing information to an enemy country. As of today, an Iranian court has since sentenced the 64-year-old man to six and a half years in prison for his supposed crimes and has since been denied release on humanitarian grounds, despite having both chronic heart and bone disease. His family continues to campaign for his release. Foreigners detained in Iran have often been noted to have been used as bargaining chips against rival countries during negotiations. We now head on over to the American state of Kentucky, centering in on the city of Louisville. Back in 2020, paramedic Breonna Taylor's home was suddenly stormed by a group of non-uniformed police officers believing they were storming an apartment used for drug dealing operations. After her boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, fired a warning shot in self-defense that injured one of the officers, all the officers opened fire, causing Taylor to be killed by a massive stream of gunfire. Taylor's death was one of the catalysts in the 2020 George Floyd protests across America, in which civil unrest protesting unfair treatment of black people by police officers and police brutality erupted across the nation. In the wake of the killing, four of the police officers have since been charged with violating Taylor's civil rights, and as of today, the country's Department of Justice has formally stated that the Louisville Metro Police Department had committed an egregious violation of civil rights that day, saying that they had, quote-unquote, breached the people's trust. Such a declaration comes nearly two years after the killing following months upon months of investigation and trial.